Well, there you go, folks. What an end to the week. Arifa Cathedral in the background there. And uh, absolutely hammering it down. But we've had a great week. If you look now, we've got Dan here. Dan's just had four barbell in no time. All that after after having a lovely net of roach, dace, chub, perch, a bit of everything. So we're on the tennis court section today uh, in Hereford. And uh, obviously this time of year, this is the place to be. Um, there's a lot of bleak here, in all fairness, uh, which I think puts some people off. But, you know, you can get through these bleak. We today have fished really simple uh, fed hemp, sweet corn, put a bit of ground bait in, and we did chop up a few worms so we could use worms as well because, you know, worms are going to catch everything, aren't they? And we've, that's enabled us to catch some perch as well as the roach and chub. But sweet corn's been really good. We've caught some big roach on sweet corn as well. And if you want to come here and do hemp and tares, you know, you can sort of single out the single out the, the roach and uh, it's, uh, it's just brilliant fishing. The reason why this is so good at this time of year is we're sort of that autumn time and below here you're on uh, gravel and stone and above here is the famous Belmont stretch which is all, um, you know, it's deeper water, it's clay bed, silt uh, and that's where, you know, that's where the fish want to be when it's cold and they want to be in the hot summer, they want to be where it's gravelly and fast flowing and this is sort of in between, you know, we've got, um, you know, it's like more like a sandy sort of silty bottom here. So it's sort of an in between the two with a bit of gravel, with gravel at the end. And um, that's what autumn is, isn't it? It's, a, it's an in between time. It's, you know, it's sort of, an, it's not cold, but it's not hot anymore. So, and that's why it's so good here. And we've just like literally, I mean, how good, you know, I say we've caught a load of dace and chub and roach and stuff like that. And then just decided for the last couple of hours, we'll chuck out a pellet feeder and Bosch should have four barbels. So, um, it just goes to show, doesn't it? Um, but the river is, you know, I feel like we are starting to, you know, we're running out of time a little bit now. Um, it looks, looking at the forecast, we've got, um, the river's rising now, actually, as we speak, it's coming up. It's not going to go massive, massive. I know it's on Sunday night, we've got uh, a frost come, you know, we're going to have frost and it's going much cooler. You know, and that always feels like the sort of the beginning of the end to the sort of autumn barbel fishing. Um, which is, you know, just to say you feel like you're running out of time. But actually, it's um, it's still a good chance to catch some of these big fish. We caught some big fish yesterday. We've had a brilliant week in all We've caught fish all week. Um, it's only today we've come and fished for the for the smaller fish, but we've caught barbel all week. And some of those have been really big, proper, those proper white. You know, bear in mind, a, a big white fish is £10. Do you know what I mean? That's a £10 fish on the white, still a special fish. And um, we've been catching those sort of £8 upwards fish and um we had a lot of fun in all fairness but um so yeah so what else has happened this week we had um oh the start of the week we had our uh, the river y team championships um which is a match that we brought forward this year from february we brought it forward to october so that we get the best of the fishing you know this out of town fishing and um it's uh, it proved to be a brilliant decision because the, the match was brilliant we had all the out of town sections in and um, also everyone caught, you know, there's no, there's no blanks at this time of year. Everyone's got fish in front of them at some point. And um, we averaged, there was 90 anglers fishing and we averaged £24 per man, um, which is just incredible. I don't can't think of another river in the country that fishes like that. And um, we're, um, and luckily I was second in the match. I had a lovely day catching £58 of mainly day, so I did have a small barbel. And my, uh, my Woody's team won the, won the title. So uh, all in all, it was a brilliant weekend. Um, it was a close affair. We only just beat uh, Cadence Super Team. We tied on points, but it went to a weight count back, and we beat them by about twenty-one pounds. So that was uh, yeah, it was a real close match. And uh, yeah, and then I say we've been out with guests this week. We've had a bit of everything. We had um, we had a guy catching catching their first barbel. Another guy caught his P, yeah, they both first barbel, PB barbel. One of our guests had some, probably, we didn't weigh it, but probably 70 to 80 pounds of chub on float, you know, which was, you know, on the Wilder River, which is just epic fishing. And then, uh, been with Dan and Julie the last couple of days and we've just had a proper little safari. We did some barbel fishing yesterday and caught some chub as well. And today we've come and fished float. So, you know, everything's, everything's in play still. Uh, the fish are still very much, you know, they're still out of town, but who knows what the, what next week's cooler weather will bring it will it will have an effect on things but uh, hopefully we can carry on catching into into early november um i certainly don't see it suddenly stopping but uh, for now it's been very good and there we go right on cue dan's playing his fifth barbel 
It's slowly becoming an island, the river's rising pretty quick now. Let's see if I can zoom in on that for you. That's what we like to see, bent rods. Dedicated angler in the absolute pouring rain. Just goes to show if you're prepared to put the time in, you'll be out of there soon. Otherwise you'll be floating off down the river. But a fantastic end to a fantastic week. Right, I'm going to go and land this barbel. Well, that was a nice end to a couple of days, and that's our guests off back to Essex with a hopefully a memorable experience under their belts. So, a bit of housekeeping. Let's get to take the water temperature. Now, I haven't actually taken it for a few days, so I don't know where we're up to, but I would expect it to be slowly dropping after the warmer weather of last week. Now we've had this rain. So what we go in. Yeah, so it's 13, 13.7, so that's still a good temperature. Uh, 13.7, yeah, so uh, actually a bit more than I thought. Thought it might have dropped with this colder rain we've had the last couple of days, but clearly it's holding its temperature and that's why these barbel are having a feed. You know, we've got a rising river and um, they want to get fed up for the winter don't they so uh, so that's good um, we'll be keeping an eye on that It'll be interesting to see how it sort of reacts next week when we get the the frosts and the cold nights and see how much it plummets because as we know sudden drops in temperature or even sudden rises sometimes can be bad for sport so what we're going to do with this vlog now i've had quite a few questions come in on the vlog as you know as as i release them they come in on the comments on youtube and um so what I'm going to do, rather than having to sort of spend time answering all those messages, because I have enough messages to answer anyway, and I just can't keep up. So what I'm going to do is actually use those questions as part of the next vlog. So in this instance, um, two two questions sort of cropped up. Um, one was a, a regarding disabled access to the River Wye. Now I know quite a few stretches where you can drive along the riverbank. There's a few steps down to the riverbank you can get quite close. Um, there's one just down here on the Hereford Water. They actually built. A disabled ramp so you could get wheelchair access down to it the problem was the ramp was built too far away from the water so you're pretty much on a low low river you can't fish it and on a high river it's too dangerous because you're surrounded by water so that's not ideal and i know of places at ein where there's you know sort of good concrete steps uh, good concrete platforms where you can fish off and we've got the platforms in the town here wooden platforms but ultimately i can't think of anywhere where there's a uh, a proper you know ramp down to the river where someone could fish safely someone could wheel themselves in a wheelchair down to the river and uh, fish safely so i'm asking our viewers to see uh, come see if they can come up with any suggestions i say i know plenty of places where someone could if they could get down steps they could fish safely they could park behind the peg but actual wheelchair access who knows anywhere let us know comment in the in the comments and let's see if we can help uh, help someone out here um Second question that came in was regarding, in my last vlog, we showed that we were fishing block end feeder. We are fishing four mil pellets in a block end feeder. And someone said, why are you doing that as opposed to just putting it into an open end feeder and plugging it either end with ground bait? Well, two reasons really. Uh, one is, you know, we all use ground bait for barbel, especially in conditions like this, you know, barbel, ground bait, hemp and halley crush, all the different uh, mixes and what have you and that. And they're all effective. But barbel have seen it all before many times and i find that they can just switch off it and i find then changing to uh, just pellets is um brings you another sort of burst of bites and uh, you know you're confident the fish aren't backing off um so that's one reason there's two ways to do it really i mean in really flooded conditions if you don't want to use ground bait you can get these four mil pellets if you soak these underwater for about two minutes and then drain the water off after about 20 minutes, you'll find they take on a stickiness and you can actually plug those. You could plug those into a cage feeder and just plug them in there and they'd stay in there, go to the bottom and then slowly work their way out. 
in heavily heavy water in you know flood conditions that's very effective um, but the reason I use a block end feeder and I've got one on here and this is what I'm going to fish today I'm going to have a little go myself now um, so block end feeder standard camas and black cap and I've not done anything to the holes on this I've not widened them or anything um, sometimes you get different different manufacturers uh, four mils are different you know they, they just vary size to uh, manufacturer to manufacturer and sometimes they're just a bit big to come out of the hole so sometimes you might just need to bore them out a little bit just to make them bigger but this one's perfect for me because what happens is is you can see I wound that in earlier and there's still a few pellets left in there right? and they've swelled up and they won't come out of there now but what happens is is when you fill this up with four mils okay I'll fill it right up invariably what happens as that goes through the air and hits the water, some pellets come out as soon as it hits the water. And then as it's sinking, some pellets come out then. And then when it hits the bottom, some pellets come out and stay in there, and some stay in there. And what that's done is from the top of the water, of it hitting the water to the river bed, it has spread pellets in a, in a line down. So they've sunk, so they've sunk at varying depths and they land at various stages down your peg. So it creates that trail. I say this trail of bait that I always talk about columns of feed and I find that's better for getting fish you, know, you get fish draw fish from further around on these pellets and get them mutching around eating four mil pellets picking them off and if you keep casting in the same place you'll get that trail of bait and it, it's just a longer trail rather than expecting the fish to come straight into a, let's say a, a ground bait feeder that's put you know a, a, an open end feeder that's plugged either end with ground bait that sinks to the bottom and those pellets are only releasing from there and maybe trending a little bit downstream these, if you're fishing in 10 foot of water, you imagine a, pellet, a four mil pellet that lands at the top of 10 foot of water and a four mil pellet that releases near the bottom is gonna fill, fall in a much longer line. And I believe that draws fish towards your feeder eventually. So that's why I use block enders a lot. And it's very effective, even in conditions like this where the river's coming up and there's a lot of water about, that can be very effective. Um, so that's why I use block enders and I hope that answers that question. I'm gonna have a chuck now, see if we can catch the barbell. So 14 mil pellet there banded and I've got my feeder full of pellets and when I cast that out that's gonna as I say hit the bottom and pellets will have come out on the way down and that's why I use a nice long hook link there so I've got a real good sort of arc of feed and hopefully it's somewhere in that trail those fish are going to come across my hook bait. Folks, not the biggest fish of the week, right? I'm about to be shipwrecked here, so I think that's as good a way to sign off as any. It's been a brilliant week. Have a great weekend. I must also point out that uh, to the guy who uh, commented that my uh, landing net wasn't big enough for landing big barb or a much bigger net to rest those barbel. Um, I've had to think about things like, I kind of think you might be right mate, I mean, at the end of the day, I can't, 
I can barely fit in it myself, you know? Keep the comments coming, guys, but please keep them sensible.